Today, it's all about the stuffed cherry pepper. Glad to see you guys showed up. Today we're going to stuff some cherry peppers. We are. It's going to be a ball. And we've got all of our ingredients laid out. We've got our vinegar, our olive oil, our garlic, our bay leaves, the prosciutto, the provolone cheese, and the cherry peppers. We're ready to go, baby. I don't see any That's cherry Nana. peppers. Oh. I don't think you picked them. Not yet. But, and this is a big but. We can go out there right now and pick them. The garden's right out here. Why don't you guys take a walk with me? We'll go pick a bunch of cherry peppers and we'll come back in and we will rock and roll this thing. Get going. Okay, let's get in that garden and pick us some nice cherry peppers. Boy, all the peppers came in good this year. You can see these right here. These are nice and red. Those are uh, conchos. They're hot and they're ready to be picked but i'm not using them today what we're going to use is these nice uh cherry peppers and they're in here we got some beauties too there's a nice red one right there i don't know if you can see that but i'll get them picked and we'll get in there and get this look at them they're beautiful so they're going to be great in the for stuffing but the one thing we did find out in the last batch we did because this is our second batch they're not all that hot so we like a little heat we're going to take this time and put in some Thai chili peppers. Those are beauties. We'll put one in each jar there, and uh, it'll just snap it up a little bit. We'll make a little bit of heat for them, even though the, the cherry peppers that we're using are not all that hot. So let me, uh, let me finish picking these, and I'll meet you inside, and we'll make us up a batch. Okay, we picked a nice bunch of peppers. And there's some conchos mixed in there. There was just time to pick them. I am actually going to stuff some of these smaller ones. I mean, they're going to be hot, but uh, that's kind of what we're looking for anyway. So the next step is we need to sterilize our jars. And a great way to do this, even though I don't have a full dishwasher, is to take them and put them right in here. Run a load. Run a load. And, and then let them go through the sterilizing step, and it's perfect. So this is going to take maybe an hour and a half or so. Get this baby fired up. There she goes. Let it rock and roll. Okay, so we're washing up all the, uh, the haul from the garden. And they're looking pretty good, but this is the time when you want to make sure that everything you picked is good because you know I had to get rid of quite a few out there see now that's a bad one and we don't want that to be in our in our stuffed peppers because you gotta remember that nothing gets better after it's canned it only gets worse and you don't want it to contaminate the rest of them so I'm gonna finish washing these up and let them soak for a minute. I just heard the uh, dishwasher go off. So the sanitizing cycle is done. So these guys are ready to go. I tell you, this is a beautiful thing. I didn't really have to do too much. Okay, let me get all set up and uh, we'll go into the next step. So we finished washing them up and I put them on this uh, towel to dry them up a little bit. But we're going to go to the to the next stage, uh, we'll say, and just uh, I'm going to do a little hand drying over here. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world if uh, some water got mixed in with the uh, with the vinegar, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to store them in vinegar for a week, uh, and that's how they're going to gain their acidity, and it also makes them uh, kind of toughens them up so that they're and, and keeps them solid when you go to eat them. It's it's great. So. You know, the other thing that you want to do now is you want to give them another inspection as you're, as you're drying them because I noticed that there was a few more that uh, I had to pull out that uh, got by quality control out in the, uh, in the garden. These things are going to happen, but you just take and get rid of them now. You know, and you're going to find that there's, 
there's little imperfections like this I got a pinhole I don't know if you can see that right there there's a there's a pinhole on that one you're gonna find those kind of things you know what I mean when you cut off the top you take a look inside see if you think uh, you want to use it or not and and I say that you know anything like that that's got some uh, questionable uh, you know is it gonna stand up over time or not I'd say take and put all of those in a jar to give away that's probably the best way to handle it then you don't have to worry about it, uh, it besides that kind of stuff won't, wouldn't make anybody, uh, it wouldn't kill anybody. It would just make them so sick they wish they were dead. And the, that's not the end of the world. So I'm going to finish drying these up, and then we'll, uh, we'll go on to the next step. I'll catch up to you in a second. Okay, so we're back over here, and we're going to start uh, trimming up our peppers. And all we're going to do is take the top off of it, and then we're going to get rid of the seeds and I found that this guy right here this works out pretty darn good for cleaning out the inside of this thing so as you can see just go in there and just kind of scoop it just kind of scoop it out of there get rid of all those seeds and everything you want all the inners out of that thing there we go okay and that's all there is to it and then just drop it into one of your mason jars. So then take the next one and do the same thing. We're going to repeat. It's not hard. It just takes a little time to do this. But it's, again, you can see, just get in there and clean that out. You know, there's going to be seeds flying all over the place. But that's why you have somebody clean up after you're done. Me. And the other thing was, I forgot to mention it, but you want to clean around that blossom end you know clean that out that was part of the the wiping it down thing that we were doing now you know, notice that I, I did pick some small ones right and some people will say well those things are so small what are you going to do with them they're going to be hard to stuff they are going to be hard to stuff but if you get all big ones you're going to have a lot of leftover space inside of those jars and the, the little guys you get to fill in so again as you're doing this you're checking to make sure you haven't missed anything here as far as a pepper not being good or something and just clean it out get it in there and that's about all there is to uh, to this part of it I think I said in the garden I'm not going to stuff the conchos and I don't usually they are pretty hot but I am going to do a few of them because I didn't pick as many peppers as I thought I was going to have out there. And uh, we're going to do a few of these. But the one thing that's difficult about them is you really got to dig down inside. And they do have a nice wall to them, so that they're pretty hefty. Dig down there and clean out everything. Wow, that looks good. That wasn't all that bad. You know, and even if there's only one or two that go in each jar, hey, that thing, that's about the perfect pepper right there. That's the kind of pepper that's going to burn on the way down and the way out. All right, that looks pretty good. It isn't going to matter if there's a few seeds left in there. It's just going to, it's going to make it a little hotter is what it's going to do. But these cherry peppers, uh, they're not all that hot. For, for whatever reason, they're, they're very mild. Um, I, I just, I thought I bought hot peppers to plant. And some of these things that don't resemble cherry peppers, um, you know, they took on a different uh, configuration as they grew. Um, well, I think what happened was I tend to save seeds from now, uh, from time to time, every year. And if I save some seeds, just for instance, just for instance, you find one like this. This was supposed to be a cherry pepper. But if you look at it, it's got the characteristics of, um, you know, a much different pepper. Um, and when I look, what, another thing that comes to mind is as I look at the bottom of this, that's another thing that you want to do at the blossom end is when you're, when you're washing them over there and you're wiping them down, make sure there's no little cobwebs right down there at the, at the bottom. Uh, you find them from time to time. Little spiders live in there. You know, you just clean it out. It's it's all about getting them clean. But what I was saying was, because um, it's pretty easy for my train to get der derailed. Um, 
the the peppers resemble a different uh, pepper uh, other than a cherry pepper because if you save your seeds and they're not heirloom in other words they've been um, modified they're a uh, what's the word I'm looking for hon my wife's not working with me right now she's doing her uh, her room over for the fall what's the what's the word um, if they're not an heirloom they're a uh, I'm getting. I have nothing. Nothing. You dry. You went. You dipped into the well and you came up dry. It feels <laughs> empty. Uh, it'll it'll come to me. But if they're not heirlooms, they're uh, they they've been. Uh, no. You know what? It's bugging me, and I got to find out. I'm gonna get right back to you. So you hang tight. I'm gonna get that answer. Well, you knew I couldn't let that sleeping dog lie. It's hybrid. So if you got a package of seeds that you plant, if, if, I don't know if you buy your plants or if you, uh, if you start them at, in February or March, which I usually do. If it says hybrid on it, you want to mock your little mocker stick saying hybrid because if you do save the seeds, it's a crapshoot of what you're going to get next year. It could come up anything because it's a hybrid. It's not an heirloom. So I can rest uh, easy tonight now, right, hon? Yes. Yes. Okay, so back to what we were doing. And this is going to be an odd pepper to, uh, to stuff. But who cares? You know, it's not store-bought. And I'll tell you, the last batch that we did was delicious. It was a success. We did one the year before, and it wasn't as good. So you got to learn from your mistakes. And I've been doing this a long time, so uh, that means a lot of mistakes. But a lot of learning, too. Um, so what we did wrong last year is we took and did the whole process in one day, which was pick your peppers, come in, clean them, uh, clean them by washing them, but also clean them by cleaning out the interiors of them and then we stuffed them and that was wrong the one thing that you really need to do and it's very important we didn't think it was but after doing it the correct way this year it's huge you need to soak these in vinegar for at least a week and I think we went what about eight days nine days it was a little over a week which isn't going to hurt them you got to get the acidity into the peppers so that they'll you won't have a problem saving them, storing them. Because otherwise they're just going to be in olive oil and they're just not going to keep that well for a long period of time. I can't tell you how long they will keep. I mean, this isn't something that I'm well schooled on. But uh, I would say you could probably keep them six or eight months without an issue. Anytime that you open up a jar that you've put together, and again, we're not going to process these. So it's going to be the vinegar this week. The next week we're going to stuff them, put them in a jar with oil. And when you do that, um, they're not being processed. So you're not killing certain bacteria in there. You're hoping that the 5% uh, acidity from the vinegar is going to do, do its job. Um, but the difference from not doing the vinegar first and doing the vinegar for a week or more was huge. I mean, the, the flavor on these things, and they snap when you bite into them, and that's what you want. You don't want soft, soggy uh, peppers, and that's one of the reasons that you want to, you know, pick them that day, bring them in, and at least go to the vinegar uh, portion of the processing. I mean, that's, you don't get any fresher than that. You didn't go to the store and buy them, you picked them. They just, if you ever had a pepper right from the garden, there is no comparison from a store bought and I'll tell you I could put two peppers down on the table not tell you which came from where take a slice out of each give them to you and you could definitely tell me which one came from the garden it's just night and day so uh, anyway I'm going to finish cleaning these and then I'll come back and get you because there's no sense for you hanging around you can go have a beer or something right I'll be right back Okay, we're back. I'm down to just a few more to cut up here. I got three more peppers to do. Here's one. 
get a nice cavity because you want to be able to get your uh, oh you know we talked about what we're going to stuff wood because that's that's next week but um, we're going to use provolone which I go to the deli and have them cut off a, a nice block and then you're going to cut pieces off of it and we'll show that um, the other thing is we use prosciutto and we wrap the uh, we wrap thanks <laughs> good thing he's around <laughs> thanks for coming in today uh, you wrap the uh, provolone cheese with the uh, prosciutto ended up with um, four of the filled quads and one that's about half. So that's going to end up giving us uh, nine pints next week when we uh, when we wrap this up. So I think that's going to take care of us for this week. And you might as well go have a beer and relax and then come back because in about two shakes we're going to be back for next week. But in reality, I got to wait a week. So a uh -huh. I'll catch you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so uh, welcome back. This is the following week. We're what eight days? Mm -hmm. I think it's been eight since days. eight days since we put up our uh, our cherry peppers, and now we're going into the final leg of this, which isn't all that hard, really. It's just a little bit of time, but so this is all vinegar in here. We're going to dump these out, and we're not using these jars. I just don't like putting them back in the big jars. So we've got the small jars. And what's going to happen is these are going to translate into uh, nine of the uh, pints. So these, these were quarts. And we're going to end up with nine pints, approximately. One might end up right in the refrigerator. We'll see. So we get all that vinegar out of there. It isn't going to matter if there's a little bit left in there. So I'm going to drain all of these and then I'll meet you over and we'll start stuffing them. Alright, so we're going into the next step in this process. Which basically is just taking each one and you have to kind of handcraft this. I mean, you got to cut the pieces to the individual uh, pepper because they're all different sizes. They were made by Mother Nature. And what we're doing this time is something a little different because we feel like we're getting a little better at this and we want to try something different here. So usually we just wrap them with uh, prosciutto. And this time we're going to wrap them with prosciutto and some of them we're going to wrap with, uh, oh, did you wrap a double with prosciutto and hot capicola? So I don't know if this is going to be a real treat or a bust, but... Uh, we're going to try it, and I think it, uh, my mouth is already watering here, <laughs> that hot capicola. And the other thing that we're going to do this time a little different is we're going to drop in some of these uh, Thai chili peppers, like I mentioned. We're going to add a little heat to them this time, something different. We had a lot of Thai chilies, so uh, you, you, you know, you usually make these with hot cherry peppers. And for some reason, these are not hot. So we're going to uh, create some heat by uh, putting some hot capicola in here. Look at that hot capicola. And, and we just tested it. Because, of course, that's what you do when you're, when you're cooking. You have to test everything because you don't want to kill anybody. Um, hot capicola and drop in some Thai chili pepper fresh from the garden. I just picked them. So that's all you're going to do is you're just going to pack these jars. I mean it takes a little time. You pack the jars nicely and you're going to make sure you push them down a little bit. Make sure you get enough in each jar. And then you're just going to fill it with oil. Now that's the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about. I mean I already mentioned it I think last week but we're going to go over it again because it's kind of important. So as you can see we're using a mixture of 
canola oil, extra virgin olive oil, and grapeseed oil. Now we get this over at uh, at BJ's, but I mean I'm sure it's sold in other places. There's the name brand there. Pom how do you say that? Pompili? Pompili? I don't know. Anyway, it's close enough. You have it right there. But if you don't think that's important, it is. It's there's two major things that are really important in doing these uh, stuffed peppers. Step one is to make sure you absolutely take two weeks to do this, at least. You want to take the first week, as you saw in the beginning of the video, clean everything up good, cut them, cut the tops off, clean the insides out, put them in the jars, and add the vinegar, and then just step back, and you got to wait at least a week. We went eight days. We just didn't have the time to do it uh, up to this point. Actually, we, we did some other canning today, and that's going up as a separate video. That one, what did we just do? We did some, uh, what did we just can? <laughs> we've been doing so many things, we forgot what we did. We just can. We pickled some pepper rings. Oh, that's right. We pickled some hot pepper rings. So anyway, that's, a, that's up on a separate uh, video, or it will be. I don't know exactly in what uh, stage these will go up. But the second thing that's really important here, because we learned the hard way, if you use just extra virgin olive oil, the stuff is going to congeal in the refrigerator. And you're going to take this thing out, and it's just going to be this mass of everything stuck together. And you had to dig out a cherry pepper. You say, all right, the family's coming over. Who's going to want a cherry pepper? And you've got to dig it out before they're ready to eat, because if you don't, the thing's a mess. So we did a little uh, invest. What's that? Research. We did a little research. Thanks for the, the help there. And what we found was if you use a combination of these three, it's beautiful. So we've already put stuff in the refrigerator, and let me tell you, it's very important that you do that. That's the biggest tip I can give you on this is the those two things. Now those are hot peppers. So, you know, I've mixed them up a little bit. It's not traditionally what you would use in this, but uh, who cares? We're eating them. We're not selling them. We only give things away. And if you get any complaints, they don't get any more, right? That's right. <laughs> and, of course, it's important if you have a bunch of questionable things, you make sure you put them all in one jar and just give them to somebody you don't really care about. No, no, just no, kidding. No, no. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> All right, I think I'll step back for a few minutes. I'm going to pitch in and help a little bit, and then we'll come back and wrap this up. Okay, so we made it. We ended up with eight pint jars, which are less than what we thought, but it's a guesstimate. You know, as you put them in and tuck them down, and you want to get a lot in there, and we probably tucked them down a little tighter than when, uh, when they were in the uh, quart jars. All right, so we're topping off with our uh, bay leaves, and we're going to put in our garlic. Okay. Then our oil, and we are done. All right, so we got three more to top off with oil. Again, it's important to use that mixture of canola, grapeseed. And, um, olive. and olive oil. It's important and it'll pay dividends. Don't be afraid to send a comment if you make some and let me know how they went. I'm always interested. And heck, share these videos, baby. You know, share the love. Never hurts to give a little like if you like what you're watching. 
We have a lot more video ideas coming up down the road. Some involve food. Some involve, of course, Disney. We've got a lot of Disney stuff to put up. we got to finish our trailers because I, I think what's going to happen is we're going to stick this in between some of the trailers so you don't get burnt out on the, on the RV show at Hershey. That's, that's kind of a specialized thing if you're thinking about buying a trailer. You gotta watch that series because there's a lot of information. All right, so we're gonna clean the top with some hot water here. Yeah, you're good. And then we're gonna lid them up to the last step of this process. And how long did this take us? You think to to um, you know just to cut up and and stuff them. A couple hour. hours? Yeah, yeah, maybe an hour and a half. I think it was getting close to two hours. Of course, we are dragging a little bit because we did do that other video today, too. We're not going to run them together, but the other video is on the hot pepper rings. So I'm gonna, my goal is to put up um, a video a week, and we'll see how that goes. Another video that's coming up is the rehab of my bathroom, and... Uh, I'm also a Corian fabricator certified, so I'll be building my, uh, or fabricating my countertop, which is a two bowl countertop, and I believe I'm going to put a um, coved backsplash on it, so I'm going to show you how to do that too. It's not something that you can run out and do, but you'll have an idea of how it happens. The only reason that I'm saying that it's not something that you can go out and do, because you need some specialized tools. And you're just not going to go and spend hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars for tooling just to build a countertop. Um, besides, you can't buy the material unless you are certified, so you just you can't do it. But the idea of doing the video is to give you an idea of what goes into one. Well, it may be interesting. Then again, you may fast forward out of it. I don't know. All right, beautiful. So that's it, just tighten it down. And it looks like this is a wrap, huh? This is a wrap. Okay. Okay, the only thing left then is to say thanks for joining us. I I appreciate that they stopped by. It wouldn't be the same without them, would it? No, it would not. No, I don't think it would be. I'm glad you stopped in, took a few minutes. We're trying to keep these informative and not too long. So I hope we don't fail in doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so Till the next time. Till the next time when we see you, you on, on Ferg TV. TV. Welcome to Ferg. You're off to the races. I need a okay. place All to right. clip. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Ferg TV. Hey, I'm glad you guys showed up. Today we're going to make stuffed cherry mix. Oh. <laughs> Take five. Welcome to Ferg TV. Hey, I'm glad you guys showed up. I forgot what I was doing. No, I am. I am. I'm glad. She's not. But <laughs> I am. <laughs>